Casey Dinges, Senior Managing Director for Public Affairs, Membership and Marketing with the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us today for a discussion about the next generation science standards for K-12 education in the United States. I'm joined today by Dr. Steve Pruitt with Achieve, where he is the Senior Vice President for Content, Research and Development. Uh, before that, Steve has had a long career in education, starting out as a chemistry teacher in high school, and he also held a number of important positions uh, in the Department of Education in the state of Georgia. Thanks a lot, Steve, for being with us today to, to talk about this important topic. Thank you so much for having me. So let's get right into it. Why, why are these this next generation science standards so important for the country? The next generation science standards offers the first opportunity we've had in, in a very long time to really reform science education and, and make what we have used as school science actually reflect what's going on in the 21st century in the workforce. Do the states, do they need to take legislative action or is it administrative action? Well, it depends. Some states it's um, actually approved by the legislature. In a lot of states it's approved by the State Board of Education. In a few states the actual state school superintendent has the opportunity to, to just sign off on them. But uh, they all, you know, as is the United States, there's lots of different rules in all the different states. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the goals and objectives here? You know, um, the issue of getting more kids interested in the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math is an important issue. We certainly have a lot of underrepresented groups in the STEM area. Is it to get more kids into STEM, or is it to have a more, if you will, scientifically literate society in general? Can you, can you address that? Absolutely. Um, well, I think the first thing is, scientific literacy for all students. Um, we want to be able to give all students a quality science education. Living in the 21st century, there's too much going on out there for them not to have um, the ability to analyze and interpret and be able to, to have quality discussions, make quality decisions for their lives. Um, so the first thing is to give access for all kids. Now obviously living in the 21st century with, with the uh, incredible reliance we're having on the STEM fields. Obviously part of that is getting kids interested and excited about science and STEM and, and moving them into those careers. For years we've been trying to increase the quote-unquote pipeline by you know, putting our best and brightest in there. Um, I think it's debatable about whether we've always had our best and brightest because we haven't given that access to all kids. So a part of this is, is to provide that rigorous uh, content that will provide students a real knowledge base to be able to go into the STEM fields, but also engage them in a way that helps them see that science and engineering are actually exciting things for them to choose as a career. Um, the engineering community in general and ASCE members in particular might be interested uh, to know from an engineering perspective why are the, the standards for, for K-12 so different this time? As an engineer, I think the most important thing is to say that engineering is a key part of the NGSS. Um, there have been a few states who have included engineering in their science standards, but not very many. Um, and so this marks a real change for states in including engineering as a, as a component for K-12. Not for a selected group of kids or not for just certain grade bands, but, but really engaging students in the engineering design process from the time they're in kindergarten all the way through graduation. Um, so having kids actually engage in a set of practices that um, they will be able to show evidence of what they understand, but also to be able to help them understand criteria, trade-offs, and, and actually what better way to show the applications of science than through an engineering design. What can the engineering community do as a community or as, as individual engineers to, to support the adoption of these standards? You know, one of the things that we're finding is it, the business voice is, is really important uh, in terms of support. Um, becoming informed, uh, being educated about the process itself, how it worked, who was involved, maybe equally who was not involved, <laughs> um, knowing that this was a truly a state-led effort and there was no federal money or no engagement by the federal government in that, but them really understanding the, the the process itself and the value that this adds to the community. Also, I think it's important that they understand the things that it doesn't do. Um, you know, it doesn't represent the full breadth of engineering education. 
but it, it really does give the solid foundation for it. It also um, has redefined how we think of scientific rigor. Uh, that it's not about just pieces of information, but it's actually the application of that information into the real world situation, which again, is really reflective of the engineering component. So I think, uh, and then once they have that real understanding, being advocates, being able to go to their state science supervisors or their science education agencies or their state boards of education and being willing to be an advocate uh, for the next generation science standards because anytime you have a change of this magnitude, you have people who get uncomfortable. And it's going to be really important that the business community, and in particular this business community, because of the fact that we are trying to prepare students to go into the industry, it's really important that they're going to be engaged in it. Steve, thanks again for coming in uh, today to talk about this very important issue for the country, and uh, we're, we're all hoping for success. Thank you for having me. And thank you for viewing uh, this session. Uh, for more information, you can go to ASCE's website, www.ASCE.org, for more information. Thank you.